sitting there waiting for that guy who was talking about to come up here. <laughs> thank you so much, Tim, for that, that wonderful introduction. And thank you all for, for being here on this uh, miserable night. Um, I really appreciate you coming out um, to, to hear from this work. I, I always try to debut a, a new book um, in Southern Maryland. Um, this, is, this is a place that has become our home and that's welcomed us. And, and like the characters in the book, it's given us a place to stand and to be and, and to enable uh, these things to come out. And the College of, of Southern Maryland has been a, a, a huge part of that. So thank you, Tim, and thank all of you again. Um, I, I was thinking how to, how to do this, because it, I always find it difficult to read from a novel, which, you know, when I'm writing it, it links so many different things together. Um, I think what I'm going to do is uh, I, I will read you some parts of the novel, but I also want to frame it uh, with a little explanation of, of um, why I chose to write what I, what I chose, how it came about, um, what, what led into it. And I realized when I was thinking about this also that one, one of the things I had done in the novel at the end was to uh, put in a little uh, author's note. And I thought that'd be a good way to start it since I, I try to explain some of the things in the novel in that note. Um, and it goes like this. The history we hear and have taught to us is also a story, as has been said before, made up by the winners. And thus, it is usually about those people who are the public figures of their day. Yet the world we live in and the world our ancestors lived in is and was made up of the weave of all our songs, and it is the stories untold in the histories that I wish to imagine in this book. For indeed, we're in the middle, at the beginning of this century, of a great movement to finally hear and listen to the voices that for so long have been left out of the American narrative, and a great debate about how to do so. In this book, I've taken the novelist's liberty of stretching or compressing or creating time and events in order to serve my story. And while the general structure of colonial Maryland history has been adhered to and told in this novel, it also has not bound me. I used real people and events. I made other people and events up, which is what a novelist does. And I'm going to I'm going to start with um, and, and end with two parts of the books, which are are kind of invocation, a kind of prayer, and they're about the need to uh, the need to tell the stories that haven't been told. Um, the different chapters in the novel are all told in from the point of view of one of the characters. And I label each of them as a song. So there's Hallam's song and Ezekiel's song and so on. 